Some say that the INFJ is just an inside out version of the ENFP. Some say that the ENFP is just an outside in version of the INFJ. Is that true? Let's find out in today's video. In today's video, I want to talk about the INFJ and ENFP unconscious. And there's a reason why I bring these two together. It is because they are inversely connected to this thing. What INFJs are consciously aware of and consciously in control of are things that the ENFP is unconsciously aware of and only unconsciously in control of. That means the ENFP cannot explain how INFJs do things. When INFJs do things, they move outside the conscious awareness of the ENFP. What an INFJ does is inexplicable, magical to an ENFP personality type. Similarly to an INFJ, what an ENFP does, extra intuition, is outside the comfort zone, outside the general awareness of the INFJ personality type. Now, how does that work? Well, understand this. The INFJ using introverted intuition is always seeking to consciously explain patterns and connections. What an INFJ does is it synthesizes patterns and condenses patterns, and it creates and summarizes what you could say, the what ifs and the potential that is seen and spotted by the ENFP. So the ENFP is the person that gathers and sees potential what ifs opportunities. The INFJ is the person that takes all these things, packs it all together neatly in a nice box, and then hands it right back to the ENFP. When an INFJ does this, the INFJ looks absolutely strange <laughs> to the ENFP personnel type. The ENFP type look at the Xbox and go like, what is this? How did he do that? How did he make that structure? Similarly, what an ENFP does is basically magic to the INFJ. The INFJ's natural orientation is, of course, to explain intuition, to translate it, to comprehend it, to uh, say, this is what it is. This is the totality of intuitive experience of the abstract world. This is the concept or underlying pattern or framework that will explain everything. But the INFJ will only be able to explain a part of reality, a part of opportunity. And anything outside of that box, anything outside of that concept, anything that has not been mapped out by the INFJ is chaos, is uncertain, is speculative, is unknown, is theoretical, is perhaps there, but I have no idea what it is. So for the ENFP to pick up these things and say, hey, these things are there, <laughs> these patterns are here, have you looked at and considered this pattern or this possibility? That is for an INFJ to dabble in the very arcane magic. It is absolutely Sumerian gibberish. It's like, <laughs> what? How? How did you come to this? How did you see this? How did you recognize this? INFJs have no idea how ENFPs pick up on things or how ENFPs are able to intuit and predict and explain and uh, somehow interpret and decode the underlying fabric of reality. How can ENFPs figure things out? How do they get their answers? It makes no sense. Still, both of them operate outside of their unconscious awareness. So the ENFP cannot explain how the INFJ does things more than the INFJ can explain how ENFPs do things. Yeah, the thing is anything that you understand and comprehend, you understand and comprehend because you have brought it within your conscious awareness. An INFJ can only understand and explain what ENFPs do using concepts and theories and maps. So they have to constantly pick up and translate and compress and synthesize and unpack what is being said by the ENFP personality type to have an idea in order to attune to what is being said. To listen to an ENFP who is talking and to hear what they are saying and to follow their train of thought, even though it's outside of that map, that is really difficult. Truth is, many INFJs are afraid of having conversations with ENFPs because what is said by the ENFP is so far out of that established map. Many INFJs prefer to remain and to keep using the same map or the same concept over and over again. They would not like to update the places and locations and the things that they have mapped out. They would like the map to stay the same. So some INFJs might be resistant to what the ENFP is saying. 
they might call you crazy or might disregard it or might just not listen. They will keep going back to that same old map, to those same old explanations, to those same old answers. The reason why they do this is because they have not taught themselves how to get out of their comfort zone. They are so caught up with and so focused on maintaining stability and harmony and some grasp or control over chaos that they cannot listen to or hear what you are saying. So it's only INFJs that have been able to attune to and to accept that they don't know everything. Only INFJs that are brave and bold that are able to truly connect with an ENFP personality type. True it is, yeah, as an INFJ, if you want to have a real meaningful conversation with an ENFP, you have to go out of the established path. You have to consider possibilities and what ifs that are outside of what you previously thought. The same goes, however, for the ENFP personality type. The ENFP could so easily reject the concepts and theories and the maps and ideas that are brought on by the INFJ personality type. There is absolutely no reason to believe in anything the INFJ is saying. How can they know anything? How can they prove anything that they are saying? How can they say for sure that anything that they believe is the truth? It sounds very speculative. It sounds very foreign. It sounds like a very alternative approach. Why not just stick to established ideas or established ways of looking at the world? Uh, why do we use and why do we need these maps? So ENFPs might similarly reject or avoid dealing with or listening to the INFJ personnel type. ENFPs might simply keep themselves busy with simpler things. Simpler, more fun, more low-hanging possibilities, more easy-to-reach fruits. To step into and go, okay, maybe he's onto something, or maybe she knows what she's talking about. Maybe she actually has thought this through. Maybe she actually has figured something out. To be able to say, okay, I'm going to trust this. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to uh, see if this uh, theory works or if this concept has any truth to it. I'm going to test this theory out. That requires a leap of faith and it requires for sure a degree of bravery, of courage, of vulnerability. To summarize, yeah, the INFJ has an ENFP unconscious. The ENFP has an INFJ unconscious. To learn to relate to and build a strong and healthy relationship to that unconscious, to learn to attune to that world whether if in another person or just in the outer world, is to learn to tie into a higher understanding. It is only by mastering and learning to connect to the unconscious that you can ever do anything more than what you already do. Without the unconscious, you're doomed to keep repeating the same scripts over and over again, the same patterns repeating over and over again, the same lifestyle, the same decisions, the same jumps and leaps over and over again. Yeah, <laughs> that means you have to uh, surrender yourself to a higher awareness or something outside of your current knowledge structure, your current dialectic structure of the world. <laughs> yeah, the only way to figure things out and to make a change in the world is to learn how to talk to the unconscious.